Welcome to this Tesla analysis. We'll be taking a brief, not exhaustive look at Tesla, both fundamentally and in terms of behavioral finance. We'll also be taking an alternative look, not usually reported on by mainstream media. The main focus will be on hedge fund shorting activities and how they've affected the share price. Issues around valuations, as well as a brief comparison between behavioral finance and fundamental analysis. Before we get going, it's important that we define some key terms regarding shares in issue. So we first look at authorized share capital, which is ordinary shares that directors are authorized to issue in terms of the memorandum of incorporation. Issued share capital. This refers to the number of shares issued. The issued shares are always less than or equal the authorized shares. Outstanding shares. These are issued shares not repurchased by the company. The outstanding shares are always less than or equal the issued shares. Treasury shares. These are shares which have been repurchased by the company via buybacks or in the open market. Floating shares, which are of most interest when we look at shorting activities of hedge funds, are the number of shares available for trading. So in essence, floating shares takes the outstanding shares, less closely held shares. So these are shares held by directors, major shareholders, and employee share schemes, for example. So these are shares which are basically buy and hold shares. So they're not easily available in the market for trading. They're not part of the day-to-day -day trading activities of that stock and less restricted shares. Short interest shares is the number of shares that have been sold short but have not yet been covered or closed out. Short interest can be expressed as a number or a percentage and is an indicator of market sentiment. So when we talk about short interest, we're looking at what percentage of the float has been shorted by hedge funds. So the higher the percentage, then it means that hedge funds are overly bearish on that stock. And the smaller the percentage, it shows that only a few hedge funds are bearish that stock. Short interest dollar volume is the product of the short interest shares and the current market price. Okay, so what we're looking at now is the current major shareholders of Tesla. And this is from CNN Business as at the 29th of December 2020. So this was just after Tesla was included in the S&P 500. So we can see that Elon Musk holds a staggering 18% of Tesla and the next top 20 or yeah top 20 is a mix of funds and other institutional investors and when we look at this top 21 holding they hold in excess of 54% so other asset managers and other institutions will also have their own holdings which are mainly long-term, buy and hold, long only. And what is key to highlight here is in the top 20, actually even when I looked at the top 40, there's not a single hedge fund that is in the top 40 holdings for Tesla. So we can see that if you really want to look at the real market movers around Tesla, you need to focus on this top 20 to top 40 holders. They are the ones who really move the markets. The hedge funds, not so much. Now, Tesla shorts in perspective. When you look at most companies and investors may speculate against the stock and say maybe they have a bearish view on the stock, they can either not buy the stock or if they have the stock, they can either sell it to close that position or they can do what hedge funds do, which is to bet against the stock, which is to short it. Now, as I'm saying in this first statement, most companies don't have investors betting against them like this. When they do, it's normally for 3% or 3% to 8% of a company's stock to be shorted. At the start of 2020, more than 20% of Tesla stock was shorted. 
As of January 15, it's the single most shorted stock on the U.S. market, and major hedge funds are amongst the most active short sellers. In February 2020, Tesla's short interest was nearly $16 billion and 18.2% of its float, or total shares available to trade. In comparison, Apple's short interest was about $13 billion, but at less than 1% of its float. So we can see that the dollar volume really is a combination of the market cap, it's a combination of the number of shares in issue and the number of free float as well as the share price. Now, when we look at the year 2020, which has really been a bloodbath for hedge funds, they've lost billions and billions and billions. We can see that at the beginning of the year, in January, when the share price was still at $113, and this is post-share split adjusted prices, the percentage of float shorted was at 12%. But as the share price started picking up, that percentage of shorts decreased significantly. But when you look at the dollar volume, it increased significantly because of the rapid increase in the share price. On July 20, 2020, Tesla did something that no company had ever done before. It saw the volume of bets made by its haters, the term um, co-founder Elon Musk uses to describe investors who bet against the company, cross 20 billion. So this was the first time in stock market history that short interest volume had crossed $20 billion and just shows how significant the shorts against Tesla have been over the years. Now, this is a chart that shows the relationship between the dollar volume in orange as well as the short interest shares in 2020. So we can see that the short interest shares has been on a downward uh, trajectory as hedge funds were taking cover closing their positions, but the dollar volume was going up as the share price was skyrocketing. Let's just take a look at what some hedge fund managers have had to say about Tesla in the most recent times. We we'll first look at Mark Spiegel. Now, Mark Spiegel is a hedge fund manager at Stanford, and he has been short Tesla for years. I think he opened his first short position back in 2011, and he has lost billions and billions and billions. So much so that for the last four years, his hedge fund has been down. And he has a personal grudge against Elon Musk, which some may say is actually salty when it comes to Tesla. But irrespective, here's what he has had to say. It's not short sellers covering their positions that's been driving up Tesla stock. I totally disagree with this, and when you look at part two of the video, um, or the or part two of the analysis that I do on Tesla, I, uh, I totally rebut this. I don't agree with this, and when you go through um, part two, you will see that as well. Another driver has been widespread enthusiasm among individual investors buying Tesla shares this year through trading apps like Robinhood. In part two, I also cover Robinhood, and you will see that even before Robinhood, hedge funds were really taking a beating in Tesla. So Robinhood is just an excuse that a lot of investment managers, analysts are just using to explain Tesla's rapid share price increase. Tesla has to be the biggest single stock market bubble in this whole market. Well, everyone says Tesla is a bubble, Tesla is a bubble. Time will tell. Tesla is now a busted growth story. Now that has to do with fundamental issues that he has in terms of pro, um, car manufacturing, production, and a whole lot of other fundamental issues which I won't go into depth in this presentation. Elon Musk is a securities fraud committing pathological liar. Now this comes from a time when Elon had insinuated that Tesla was going to make a loss. I can't remember which quarter it was, but later on it turned out that Tesla had actually made profits in that quarter. And that didn't sit well with Mark Spiegel. And he made this comment. Now the other hedge fund manager who has recently shorted Tesla is none other than Michael Burry. Now many who watched the movie Big Short will know that Michael Burry is the hedge fund manager who basically forecasted 
the 2008 financial market crash and he really became an overnight sensation via the movie The Big Short. But one thing I will say though, just as a word of caution, Michael Bure is a very highly reputable hedge fund manager, highly intelligent. But the one thing that he's not very good at is timing his shorts. And I'll refer back to the movie Big Short and the little research I've done on his call regarding the market crisis of 2008 was he actually opened his shorts three years prior to the crash. So a lot can happen from when a hedge fund manager says short a stock and when the stock actually crashes, if it even does crash. So here's a tweet that he sent to Elon advising Elon to cash in on some of his shares and also letting the world know basically that he has also shorted Tesla. Now, Wall Street's divided opinions. So let's see what some of Wall Street or what Wall Street has been saying about Tesla. The first person we look at is Kathy Wood of Ark Invest. Now, Kathy is highly regarded on Wall Street she is a specialist in interruptive innovation investments and many refer to her as the biggest Tesla bull on Wall Street. Here are some of her most memorable comments. Tesla is riding the convergence of three major innovation platforms, which is very difficult to analyze in the traditional world. Auto analysts are not robotics experts, AI experts, or battery experts. The analysts following this stock don't know how to analyze it. It is a technology stock. It is a car company, battery, utilities. It's something for everyone. I have to say I agree with her. Tesla is so diverse. It really is a company which fascinates many. And if you just look at traditional finance valuation models, you can see there is a very, very big discrepancy. Now, on the other side of the coin, we get headlines like this. Tesla's surge this year ignores fundamentals more than any other stock rally in history. Point taken, JP Morgan warns investors that Tesla stock is dramatically overvalued in new report. Not only overvalued, but dramatically so. Tesla stock should be avoided ahead of the automaker's S&P 500 inclusion. And this is from highly reputable institutions like JP Morgan. Tesla, great cars, perhaps great company, but scary stock. Are Tesla's shares worth $90 or $780? Wall Street can't decide. And this is where analysts vary in terms of how they approach Tesla. And depending on the valuation techniques they use, whether dividend discount, whether free cash flow, some of the parts, whatever valuation um, methods they use. There isn't a, a general consensus on what is the fair value for Tesla. Now, we look at Tesla now from the hedge fund perspective and how hedge funds have affected Tesla's share price throughout the years. Now, I've titled this The Widowmaker, and a widowmaker refers to a trade that results in a loss for virtually everyone who tries it. And this is what a lot of hedge funds experienced, massive losses. But what I want to highlight on this chart, which shows the share price in orange, the percentage of float shorted in gray, as well as the short interest shares in blue. So you'll see the short interest shares is an actual measure of how many shares shorted, whether 70 million, 100 million, Whereas in gray, we have the percentage of float which has been shorted. And then the share price, which is post split adjusted in US dollars. What's very interesting is the percentage of floating stock shorted has consistently been above 10% since 2011. And this is significant. So you can see even in 2011, Tesla was constantly under tech. At some point in 2012, the percentage of float shorted was just under 30%. And over the next five, six years between 2012 and 2019, we can see that the percentage of float has been ranging between 15% and 25%. And this is really, really significant. It just shows how hedge funds have been aggressive 
shorting Tesla since 2011. So much so that on the 7th of August 2018, Elon Musk sent a letter to employees and published it on Tesla's blog, claiming that Tesla is the most shorted stock in the history of the stock market. And he cited this as motivation to go private as short, set, uh, short sellers are attacking Tesla. Obviously, he didn't follow through with that. Tesla is still listed and has done amazingly well since then. What we see here, which is very interesting as well, is we can see there's been a very strong correlation between short interest as well as float. So what we see here is at um, this bottom in 2019 of June, short interest has gone down, which shows that hedge funds have been closing their positions. And this is also captured by the percentage of float shorted, which has also dropped from about 25% in late 2019 to just below 5% as of uh, November 2020. And what we see here is a report from S3 Partners, which just highlights the massive losses which hedge funds have taken in 2020. Reported that hedge funds have lost 35 billion in 2020. And of that, um, in November alone of 2020, hedge funds lost $8.5 billion. So it just shows that hedge funds have really gotten Tesla wrong. They have lost a lot of money. This chart replaces the percentage float with the dollar volume. And what we see again here is the very strong correlation between the short interest shares and the dollar volume. And like I said earlier, the dollar volume is really a function of the short, uh, the short interest shares and the share price. So we can see that from 2011 up until, say, late 2019, there's been a strong correlation between the short interest shares as well as the dollar volume. But from the 2019 bottom, when Tesla started to shoot up, the dollar volume then got more influenced by the share price and started picking up significantly, hence making that new record of crossing 20 billion, being the first time ever that this has happened in the stock market. Now let's look at standard versus behavioral finance. Behavioral finance is the study of the influence of psychology on the behavior of investors. It also includes the subsequent effects on the markets. It focuses on the fact that investors are not always rational, have limits to their self-control, and are influenced by their own biases. Now, we can go on and on about behavioral finance, standard finance, but what I want us to look at is the five tenets of standard finance and behavioral finance. I won't go through this whole table. You can go through it in your own time. But I just want to highlight the two main factors for me within these tenets. Standard finance says people or generally investors are rational, whereas behavioral finance says people are normal. Now, in the earlier forms of behavioral finance, it used to say people or investors are irrational. Again, I won't go too deep into the definition of rational, irrational, I think that is something that is covered extensively in literature. But I have to say, I'm more on the behavioral finance side, which says investors are normal. Also, when you look at markets in terms of efficiency, standard finance says markets are efficient in the sense that price equals value for all securities and in the sense that markets are hard to beat. Whereas behavioral finance is of the notion that markets are not efficient in the sense that price equals value. And I think when we look at it from Tesla's perspective, this makes more sense than what standard finance says. And then it also goes on to say, but markets are efficient in the sense that they are hard to beat, which I agree with. And for anyone who really wants to get into behavioral finance, which is a subject I find fascinating and I'm studying it myself, I really recommend that you read this monograph, Behavioral Finance, the Second Generation, 
by mere statement, which has been published by the CFA Institute. It really goes deep into behavioral finance, and it really highlights the fact that behavioral finance is not here to replace standard finance, but rather to complement and supplement it. So in closing, investors will abandon evidence in favor of a good story. Admired stocks have great stories and high prices. So this is typical of Tesla. Tesla has a very good story and Elon Musk is admired by many. And remember, overvalued does not mean you should sell immediately. Some bubbles never pop. And to close with this classic quote by Brad Ruderman, everything is in a bubble. Everybody that missed the stock market bubble is intent on identifying or even labeling the next one. For this, I urge you to watch part three of this analysis where I will take you through the whole price history of Tesla and I do label this bubble, if it is a bubble. I thank you. Please subscribe and share and follow me on all these social media platforms. Happy investing in 2021 and all the best.